is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be discussing, in my opinion, what is the most effective way to be using psychedelics and antigens for personal development, healing, and ultimately, enlightenment. Now what is exactly happening on a psychedelic? When we take a psychedelic or an antigen, it amplifies our own energy. It takes our energy that's inside and it expands it. And it's really just magnifying who we are. Now we as human beings, we have an ego. And the ego is a collection of energetic patterns. These patterns put together, they make our personality. It is how we act, how we behave, how we interact with our environment, how we react to situations. And these patterns can be changed. They can be let go. Some can be worked on to grow and become stronger and better. Others can be destructive. They can, we can hold on to these patterns because we identify as these patterns. They help cause a lot of resistance and limiting beliefs in our reality. So when we take a psychedelic, we amplify who we are. By amplifying who we are, we're able to see these patterns in unique ways, and, we're, and we can see how we're limiting ourselves by holding on to these patterns. Now the patterns can be let go. If we find something that we don't like, we can drop the pattern. Most of these patterns we are unconscious of, they operate in our subconscious, they're, they're just ingrained in us, and we identify as these patterns, so we think it is us. Which is the really challenging part of all this, because letting go of what we think we are, we feel like a part of us is dying. And when we're in that state, in a, in a psychedelic or antigen, it amplifies it, so it, it makes us feel like we truly are dying. And letting go, it's like a butterfly breaking out of its cocoon each and every time, you know, transcending its caterpillar state and becoming what it truly is. It's evolving. So there are ways that we are able to use these psychedelics that we can aid us in seeing beyond the patterns. So we take a psychedelic or an entheogen. This works with all of them. Depending on which psychedelic we're taking, it'll have a certain effect on our energy. So if I take weed, it's going to have a very low effect on my energy, as opposed to 5-MeO-DMT, which is going to have a very large impact on my energy. Now, when I take a psychedelic, if I have the intention to go in and heal, to remove the patterns that are no longer beneficial to me, that I find limiting in some way. I'm able to go into an experience and by lying still or sitting still, I'm able to see the patterns internally as well as how my body posture or my how my body moves to these patterns. So how it works is I take my medicine and then I go lie down and I lie in perfect bilateral symmetry, meaning the left and right side of my body are mirroring each, each other. Now the ego operates almost always in asymmetry, meaning it likes to engage the left or right side of the body. Like right now, I'm engaged, I'm holding the camera with one hand. I, the ego, am holding something that's separate from myself. But if I am able to lie in perfect bilateral symmetry, on medicine, where my energy is amplified, the ego is going to become uncomfortable and it's going to want to engage those asymmetries. It's going to want to break symmetry. It's going to want to roll away. It's going to want to turn all around. And if it's really frightened, it's going to want to get up and start walking around. And it's going to come up with a lot of distractions, like going to change the lighting or change the music or go check your phone or go to the washroom, go grab a drink of water. But if I'm able to fight through those distractions and I'm able to stay symmetrical. If I fight it long enough, I'm going to release those patterns. And I could burp, I could cry, I can sweat, I can yawn, I can shit, I could I could have to get up and go to the bathroom. And if it really if you really have to go, I do not fight it, just go. But but to get to that place, you got to do a certain amount of work. And then when it's time, you'll know to okay, now I'm now it's time to go go release the pattern. Now this process doesn't happen right away. I mean, you can start with it. It's like a meditation practice 
like a standard, very traditional meditation practice is you sit down and you focus on your breath. And you, you have the intention to focus on your breath and right away it's okay. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. But before you know it, you're thinking about, you know, you got to go meet your friends later or you got to go do your taxes or you, just something that you need to do or something that you're worried about or some, some idea that comes into your head that, and then as soon as you're aware of it, you're like, oh, what? What were, what could, oh yeah, then I bring it back. It's like whatever I was thinking about, just let it go, bring it back to the breath. And then before you know it, sure enough, there's some other thought that you're rambling on about. And then as soon as you become aware, you bring it back again. And over time, you keep bringing it back. And it's a practice. You keep bringing it back. And over time, you're able to stay focused on your breath for longer and longer, and the mind quiets down. This is essentially the exact same thing. Every time you notice that you're outside of symmetry, every time you engage one of those patterns, you break symmetry, maybe you're scared to face whatever it is because you know, we actually have to face our traumas to move through them. So I don't want to face it, I don't want to face it. And as soon as I'm aware that I'm breaking symmetry, I'll bring myself back into bilateral symmetry. And then this time I'll be even more focused. And over time, over this repetitive nature of keep bringing it back, over time what i found is I'm able to remain symmetrical throughout the entire experience. And remaining symmetrical and having the energy flow through you, there just seems to be a greater amount of healing that's happening. I'm able to process the ego by remaining symmetrical. Now we have a whole bunch of patterns, and these patterns are limited. We only have a certain amount of patterns. And all of these patterns can be overwhelmed. They can be let go of. And when we let go of all the patterns, then we enter a non-dual state. Meaning there isn't the ego and something separate from the ego. It's all one being. It's non-dual. There is no two, there is one. Whenever I find myself afraid in a psychedelic experience, I trust and let go. Because I know the ego always comes back. And when we get to that state, the body always opens up into a bilateral symmetry. And the hands will come up and they'll, they'll start moving, mirroring each other. And then the feet will come up and they start mirroring each other. And the energy just flows through the body. There's zero resistance. There's zero effort. This is just what's happening. The energy is simply expressing itself. There is no meaning behind it. It is just simply the expression of the energy that is. If you are interested in this work, I'm assuming most of you have this book already, or have read it, or have at least heard of it. Uh, Entheogenic Liberation, Unraveling the Enigma of Non-Duality with 5-MeO-DMT Energetic Therapy uh, by Dr. Martin W. Ball. It is, well, it's basically everything I'm talking about. So he went through this process and he discovered this, that this is how it works. And then now I'm going through this process and I'm discovering how it works. And yeah, it's, it seems to be universal. He says it's universal. It works for me. It works for other people that I've read about online. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the book, but it's yeah, basically everything I'm talking about and it. You know, it goes into great detail. Yeah, it's really, really well written, written book. Okay, I'm just going to share a little section here. All human behavior and activities is dominated by asymmetries. There are very few activities or behaviors that humans engage in that use bilateral symmetry in the body. Because of this disproportionate activity, ego patterns are more likely to exhibit asymmetry rather than symmetry. In contrast, when individuals open up fully to the energy of non-duality, such as during a 5-MeO-DMT experience, their bodies always exhibit perfect bilateral symmetry. There is always a mirroring of the left and right sides of the body, and there is never a crossing of limbs over the center line of the body. If there is movement, there is often, as there often is, the left and right arms and hands mirror each other, as do the legs. They might meet along the center line of the body, but they will not cross it. So that state of non-duality, that's that's where that's where it is that's what we're all looking for in some way so i find there's different layers to wanting to be symmetrical um the first layer is the ego wanting to get up and move around 
and to you know it needs to get up and go do something the second layer is body position it'll if you're able to if you're able to stay down and you're able to focus your attention down on the body then it's going to want to move away it's going to want to roll into an asymmetry it's going to want to roll it's going to run and roll on its side or even just a simple like moving the hand or breaking breaking symmetry to scratch your face or whatever it is so you fight through that and then it goes internally where it's emotions and fear the ego's going to want to not face it because the ego thinks that it's dying if it gets rid of this it's identified as this pain for so long and if it and if you're able to fight through all of that then you'll have a release the ego will you'll let go of the ego and you'll feel so much better you feel freer you feel more alive you feel that fear you know, that energy of fear will be replaced with love and by doing this over and over again all your fear patterns will be replaced with love and to operate from a place of love is a beautiful thing you have love for yourself if you love yourself you're able to love everyone and everything so to recap you take your medicine and you you lie in bilateral symmetry and you pay attention to how the ego breaks into asymmetries and every time you become conscious of it you bring yourself back to a neutral bilateral position and over time just keep repeating 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 you're able to stay there longer and longer and longer and the patterns just keep breaking down and if you keep doing this over and over and over again eventually you're left at a place where there's nothing to break down you are what you are you are who you are now this process is incredibly confusing and it's really easy for the ego to to take a hold of any of these ways you learn how to heal so you need to be cautious and careful always alert on how the ego operates because you could have like for example I was healing with my jaw for a long time I felt like my jaw would vibrate and then eventually one day I noticed that the ego was playing that game the ego was doing the vibrating I was like okay well the ego knows to use that now now I can't use that as a way to heal so always have to be cautious of how the ego operates okay uh, that's it for now remember to check out that book if you haven't yet links down there uh, give this video a thumbs up subscribe for more content and i will see you on the next one